And when the Spirit of God lives within you, and the Spirit of God is witnessing through the message, the Bible says He sent His Word and healed them. How did He heal them? Through His Word. There's a scripture in uh, Ezekiel about the blood. This Bible, no matter how many times it's been interpreted, there's words in here that have so much power that if you learn to use your faith, you can speak unto the mountain and the mountain will be removed. Do not understand why sometimes you can pray and instantly it happens and sometimes you can pray and it takes time. Don't know what's mustered up on the inside of the individual you prayed for. Don't know what's blocking the thing to happen. You're either a child of God or you're a child of the devil. One or the other. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. One or the other. You're either a child of God or you're a bastard. Why? is the gospel so important to be preached into all the world. It has to be preached in all the world and for before the end shall come. The end is about here. The end will end today for somebody. Their life will be over, and it's over. And whatever they had to do or whether they, whatever they could do for the Lord, if they didn't do it, that's their fault. We come to church for one reason, to enhance ourselves so that we can build up our faith so that we can fight the battles that are coming our way on a daily, weekly basis. And some of the battles that we're going through right now, and some of the battles we will go through, you'll need faith for it. Working faith is how you work a miracle. You have faith when you see somebody that has a need or a problem, you go to that individual and you tell that person what you see or what you believe. And that individual has to understand that you're doing it to be a help to them, not a hindrance or a hurt. How do you help an individual? they got to want help. Prepare yourself. Get ready for the soon coming king. Prepare and get ready. What's that really mean? That means to get this in here right and get all of this animosity and jealousy and prejudice and all this stuff out and get right with God. Some people think, well, there's a whole bunch of people going to heaven. I'm going to tell you, there's a whole bunch of people going to hell, too. The Bible says hell enlarges itself daily. And hell's just as real as heaven. We have a choice, either heaven or hell. We have a choice to live for God or not, to believe or not believe. And only you can make that decision. Nobody can make that decision for you. Why do, I have to, why do I have to do certain things? Because that's what God said to do. They didn't want to listen to Moses when Moses got the commandments and came down off of the, the mountain. They went back to their old ways. And when you get saved, you, you don't have the right to go back and live the way you did live. You've got to make a change. You've got to make changes for the better. Why? Do you serve God? That He can make the changes. You can't. How many times have you tried to do something that you know that, that's the right thing to do, but for somehow it don't turn out that way? The Bible says that when good is evil, good is there, evil's about you. It's all around you. It's there to hinder you. It's there to take you and make you feel like you're not worthy. It said, have faith in who? God. So, if you have faith, you have to have it in the source. For He's the one that's going to take care of you and do what you're asking Him if it's according to His will and you're living the way He tells you to live. Let me tell you something. If you're living in sin, you don't have right to go ask God for healing. That ain't your bread yet. He said, repent. Repent said, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever, who is ain't just one person, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be 
thou removed. Be thou removed. In other words, you've got to speak it. Say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and not doubt in his heart the things that thou hast said. If two people shall agree, the Bible says, if two people shall agree, you bind it here on earth, it's bound in heaven, is it not? If two people pray and agree, it shall be what? Done. What time will it be done? I don't know. I'm not the time keeper. I'm the per person believing with you. I see a depression spirit on you. I see a suicide demon around you. I see everything being manifest to take you out. I see a very bad health habit, and I, I see God wanting to change you, but you have to want the change. You have to make that decision. You think about that, and I'll be back. And if you do, we're going to pray, and God's going to deliver you today. And you'll leave here a different person, I promise you. Besides your seizures, has the doctor said anything about your heart? No pressure. No pressure, but nothing about your heart. Have you noticed any type of a flutter? That's a heart. Yeah. Dr. Bob just told you. I didn't examine you. I, I just felt to ask you about your heart. You said high blood pressure. He said seizures. But I saw a flutter. And that flutter can turn into a heart attack. I see this suicide demon. I've watched it since you was in here. I watched it. And it's been dealing with you a long time. There's been times that you just felt like just ending it. And you didn't know what to do. You had this fear to end, but then you had this fear not to end because you knew if you did, it's over. If you take your life, it's over. You're not going to heaven. I don't care what these preachers say. It says it in the book. Father, now heal this brother from the top of his head, God, to the soles of this man's feet. I take charge over this fluttering heart. I take charge over this blood pressure and the seizures. I rebuke you, Satan. I command you to loose your hold. In Jesus' mighty name, let it be. Let it be.